batteries. When Kyle Sullivan was 14, the year before his mother started taking her naps and he stopped brushing his teeth, his family had lived very comfortably in a spacious house with high ceilings. His father was a salesman who managed other salesmen for a company with office branches all over the world. The branch his father ran was in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, a small pond apt for big fishing training, nestled in the Berkshire Mountains where New Yorkers drove to see fall foliage. That summer, two of his father's employees, men who'd been over to the house for dinners, were caught embezzling large sums of money from the company. The men were taken away from the office in handcuffs. When Kyle was 15, they moved to New Jersey to a lesser job at a lesser company. They were used to moving at his father's old company. If you were good, you moved up, and moving up meant moving to another branch. Two or three year stints in branch towns like Olathe, Kansas, and Naperville, Illinois. His father had been a terrific salesman. He could wrap people in his stories as if he were toweling them off from a cold swim. Mm. But this move was branchless. His mother was adored in the branch towns. Living with her in these towns, however, was like being the backstage manager of her sold-out tour. The Sullivans knew her as a woman with a vast array of implausible moods that she could throw like knives for a belt sticking to their target with spectacular accuracy. Dancing in the kitchen one minute and then plunging her face into the bathroom sink to mute her bursting tears the next. The symptoms never seemed anything but superficial because they were based on the superficial. Everything came back to material possession and nothing was ever too broke that couldn't be fixed with money. The Sullivans were spirited and loud and glamorously suburban, and they threw tremendous parties. <laughs> the kind of party where new neighbors assume they'll stop for a, buy for a drink, and then end up calling the babysitter and tripling her rate if she stay the night. <sighs> Kyle grew up believing, believing that every week contained an annual event. No one missed their legendary St. Patrick's Day party where his father dressed as a priest with nothing on underneath the cloth, spouting dirty limericks from a book with a fake Bible cover to a captivated crowd, while his mother, dressed as a pregnant nun, now drank the nun in Irish step dance on the kitchen counter. But now, Kyle knew there'd be no, there'd be no more vacations, no more memberships, no more parties. Once they crossed the state line of New Jersey, his mother called out the town names like they were animals at the zoo. Oh. When they arrived at their new home, the two-bedroom, two-bath, to replace their five-bedroom, six-bath, he looked at his mother instead of the house, awaiting her reaction. She had picked this house, she had told Kyle weeks before, with a gun to my head. He told her this wasn't exactly the grapes of wrath. She took a moment to survey her new surroundings, and Kyle held his breath and leant against the hot engine of the car. What should be impact first, his father asked, hoping to break her catatonic silence. A corkscrew and some, Stein some Steinbeck, she said with a smile. Kyle was hailed. Then she said that she wouldn't feel comfortable in the house until it was painted. The colors she picked were buttery yellow with black for the shutters, and it was done in four exhausting days. But when it was finished, she had seemed to be at peace. At first, the naps she took were short and caused by actual exertion. Unpacking, arranging, rearranging, organizing, dusting, rearranging. You can have all your friends over once we redo the kitchen, she said swaying to Carol King's tapestry. She was taking stretch sips from her punch bowl-sized wine glass while Kyle ate the salad she made for herself but had given to him because she was no longer hungry. 
I don't know why we're redoing the kitchen. Well, I think it's time I'm telling you now. What do you think? Kyle put down the fork. Didn't, say we, didn't Dad say we needed a budget for a while? You know I don't like to talk about money, she said. All we do is talk about money, he said. She tensed and thinned her lips. Is this because I mentioned you having friends over? I know that's a touchy subject, but you will have friends once school starts and you get on the hockey team, and I don't want them to be embarrassed for you about this kitchen. He sharpened his eyes. I'll join the team if you stop wearing the fur. In every town they lived in, Kyle Sullivan's mother wore her fur coat to inappropriate places, <laughs> especially in his hockey games. She would sandwich herself between the other moms with their large parkas and their hooded sweatshirts. Once, he tried to point out the difference between her and the other hockey moms, as if she wasn't already fully aware. And she said she wouldn't apologize for being stylish. He told her she should apologize for being a snob. He was grounded for a month after that. The hockey moms loved her, though, because she brought a big thermos of hot chocolate spiked with creme de cocoa and lots of cups for sharing. You can't tell me they don't wear fur in New Jersey? I watch television. She grabbed the salad back and began eating. We just had to tighten our belts on the little things, on the things that no one sees. Like what, he said, with actual interest. Oh god, I don't know, like no HBO? You think forgoing premium cable is going to get us a new kitchen? When did it become such a downer? She was so used to him concurring. I'm not, I just think you should be. You don't tell me. You you don't tell me what you don't tell me what I need to be. That's not how the parenting thing works. He thought the silence would resonate her throat more clearly. His mother hated silence. She threw the salad bowl back in the sink with more force than he knew she had wanted to, and the sound of the fork hitting the kitchen window shocked them both. <sighs> what? It's just a fucking kitchen, she said. I don't know what you're getting so upset about. It's not like it's your money. Kyle kept his mouth shut, grinding his teeth and jamming his tongue against the roof of his mouth. She turned red and closed her eyes and asked him for some privacy. He walked slowly up the stairs. He sat in his bed, staring at the vanilla walls. The house may have been new to the Sullivan's, but it was old and model and the detailed molding on the ceiling made Kyle feel like he was inside a still wedding cake. Uh -huh. Unless not there. Yeah.